Welcome back to the channel. If you've never watched the channel before, I'm in the process right now of building a huge DIY backyard garage. This is mainly for cars, this side for bikes. I'm gonna have all my tools along the back wall. It's gonna be a big one. I would say we're a month into the project and exactly today is a month since I got the diggers dropped off. So I've done all of this in a month. Everything's been done by hand other than the grounds work, which was done with a digger. I'm really happy. The whole thing's coming along. My doors are in, they're sealed. I'm trying to think where we got to in the last video. I'm pretty sure the last video was doing the cladding on the outside. Before we get into today's video, I wanted to remind you guys, you get a free snapback cap with every single owner order. So if you're ordering one of our sick hoodies, add yourself a free cap to your basket. Link is in the description. We've got loads of new hoodies, t-shirts, jerseys are back in stock. Make sure you go and get yourself a owner jersey. Let me show you the cladding. Okay, so as you can see, my cladding's done. Looks pretty sick. I've got a couple of bits to do. I've got to run a mastic up that middle joint. Quite a lot of people said to me about staggering the boards, which would have made it a bit more waterproof, but I'm just gonna um, use some mastic on that single joint and like the end joint here. I've got a non-treated bit of wood on the front, so I've got to stain that and stuff, treat that, make sure it stays right. I put some UPVC trim all the way along, um, and then the rubber one sheet of EPDM. The day that I did the roof, I didn't film it, I just got it done. I was like, pretty stressed. Um, pretty much I used 18 mil tongue and groove boards on the roof and one solid sheet of rubber. So we'll go back inside now and I'll show you the front done, but the outside and the exterior is pretty much finished other than some silicon. I've got to put a couple more little black screws in on the top. I just did it really quickly last night, but I've folded and pinned all the rubber roof, put some additional bits of gray cladding on the top, a couple of bits of wood down the side to kind of feature it out, and then a UPVC black trim along the front there. So all the way around the outside is fire rated cladding in the gray concrete composite cladding you've seen that in the last video fully done looking sick finished all the trims and now it's watertight so let's go inside today we are going to be fitting the roller shutter door so as you can see we've got osb boards 18 mil the rubber sits directly on top of that i use screws um basically i got some help off someone who installs flat rubber roofs and they said don't pass load it with the nail gun from the top because then when the boards swell and then unswell the nails, stay stuck up. So that's screwed with 70 mil screws into the joists. Um, the boards are in, the rubber's on, so we are officially watertight right now, which is mega. It means I've actually got something to work with now. The shutter showed up the day we were doing the flat roof as well, which I'm pretty hyped on. It's not actually that heavy either. So I'm hoping to install this today. As you can see, it's not that heavy. It's pretty heavy, but it's not that heavy. These, are the brackets and the fitting kit for the shutter. And basically, how it works is this has to be 150 mil over the opening. They get screwed in there, 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 and there with four of these beastie concrete looking screws. And then these, these little hooks here with threads on, like U hooks, they go in there along the top, obviously adjust it to whatever you want it. Um, and then you cut the axle down to size to get it as tight as you want it, tighten the bolts up. Pretty sure this is how you do it anyway. Then you run the runners, which is these. Could probably do with painting these, they look a bit industrial, they look a bit silver, a bit metal. But what we'll do is we'll test fit them and then paint them from the outside if I want to paint them at a later date. And then these are the runners. These go up here, along here and the, rollers, the roller door fixes to the brackets here and rolls this way into the runners. I've never fitted, installed, or messed with a roller shutter door. So today's gonna to be really interesting. We've got a lot of instructions to follow, but I'm kind of gonna wing it, kind of. I'm gonna read the instructions, but at the end of the day, it's custom fit. So you kind of gotta just wing it. Um, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna tidy up in here. Basically, all these blocks are holding all the stuff. We've got some puddles. Don't stress, they're not from the roof. These puddles are from when it was raining, when there was no roof. It rained for about a week. Then the roof went straight on. Now it's not getting any sunlight to dry it. So the plan today is clear all this, get it into neat piles, 
probably along here, brush it all out and let it air out and dry with the doors wide open. So it's going to be good. It will naturally just dry on its own anyway, it's just concrete. Um, it's not actually wet concrete, it's just rainwater on top of the concrete. So, um, in the last garage, I had these um, cladding pieces on the walls in the last garage. Obviously painted grey from the last build. Basically, if you remember, the last garage had three full walls of this stuff. So there's quite a lot of this. I reckon I'll get at least one wall out of this stuff. So I'm going to insulate. Sorry. I'm going to first fix on Friday this week or potentially early next week. We're going to first fix all the light, the light wires, the cables, the electricity board for the trips and stuff, um, all the sockets. And then I'm going to insulate. Any insulation ideas, let me know in the comments below. I'll be in there mingling. Then I'm going to use these on one wall all the way along because it will save me kind of investing any money. I may board it over the top and then these just for that extra thickness. I probably will because these are kind of thin actually. In the last garage I didn't really care because it wasn't insulated and I kind of knew in the long run I wanted a massive garage. So these are not going to waste, they're getting used but maybe I'll board first to bulk it up because these are only like quite thin. It'd be nice to get some chunk in here. So, I'll use these anyway on one wall, so we're going to make a neat pile of these on some timbers. Pretty much like that. And then I've also got, if you remember in the last garage, I've got floorboards. So these here. These are pretty thick. These are all the floorboards from the last build. Pretty sure these are 18 mil. They are 18 mil, so this is pretty thick. I reckon the floor in the last garage is probably big enough to do the back wall, at least in the floorboards. So I've kind of already got one wall. I'll do floorboards on the walls in this one, as you can see. And then I probably only have to buy the materials to do one wall over there. So it's big in here. <laughs> it's a beast. So hopefully in a minute I'll come back and all this will be into neat piles and we can work on the roller shutter door. it out. It's quite echoey in here right now because it's a big space with nothing in it. I've kept my 3D2 timbers from the last garage build. I've kept my bands because I'm sure they'll come in handy. I've kept the cladding that we showed you and the floorboards. A couple of odd bits, an OSB board, but other than that it's pretty empty in here. I've moved the shutter all the way down here. The doors are already in. These are like the easy access doors. Not easy about that. <laughs> I think I need to clean the little thing out. But basically, my doors are in and we are about to install the roller shutter today. So I've got these mounts, I've got my laptop for the instructions over there, and I'm pretty sure these go like this, and then the shutter goes above that. I've got a lot of reading up to do. I'm just going to keep tuning in and showing you where I'm at and hopefully the roller shutter will slowly but surely come on. So, we've got all our parts out over there. As you can see, we've got the, um, the L brackets out which are gonna hang the shutter. It's not actually as heavy as what you probably think it would actually be. Number one, preparation. Do not remove the packaging until the tension has been applied to the door. I'm gonna take the packaging off right now to see what it looks like. <laughs> Don't stress. Nice. Okay, 13 mil drill bit, impact driver, big chunky screws, a lot of them. We've got to mount the brackets somehow. Okay, 
Okay, I'm under specific instructions on my roller shutter there. I've got to do 25 mil for the runners. I've got to do 10 mil gap and then my mounts. So we're gonna fix my mounts right now. I've done my lines, check them out. Straight there. I've used a straight edge to get them straight. And there are my lines. I'm gonna check one more time, 35. I've got one down here. 35. Let's go. Okay. I've got to go 150. Oh, they did it with no washers then. Are they being like deadly? I've got any pocket space. By the way, I've got a red eye and I'm not sure why, so I'm quite concerned. I've got pink eye, off Quacho. <laughs> Quacho, just give me pink eye. Tiny bit, you see. Solid. Swing off that. Strong, huh? Nice. Okay, so I'm gonna cut it down. I'm gonna measure one more time. Basically, the axle has to clear that from the opening of the door, which is 85 mil. I'm gonna go all the way as far as I can go for a bit of a test fit. I'm gonna cut it at 140. I'm gonna cut it at 140. Quite nervous. Quite nervous about this. It doesn't need a lot off, but it needs something off. Okay, we have got five weeks I've waited for this shutter door and I'm about to cut it in half. Quite worried. <laughs> That was a lovely garage before he burnt it down with his grinder. Okay, so, kind of sketchy, so we'll stay away from it for a minute, but it's on, it's upright, and I'm doing the axle now. So, 
this is the axle that I've put in. I've got these little these little things sticking here, which apparently clamp the axle from to stop it spinning. I've got nuts underneath that are going underneath, which are these, and I'm just going to do it with the impact for ease till it clicks, and then I'll probably get like a little ratchet or something. But that's pretty good. The only thing I'm a little bit uncertain about is how much I have to have it that way. I mean, it's only bubble wrap between that, but obviously it can slide forward and back on the on the guards, and I need to push it. So maybe I'll just push it as tight as it'll go for when I take the the wrap off. Maybe that's what you're supposed to do. Up the top, I've got like these things. These have got like teeth on them. And then I've got like U brackets. You put them over the top into these little sliders. You push your shutter as tight as you can get it. Obviously don't use this as a how-to because I am not a roller shutter specialist and I'm not taking any responsibility. If your roller shutter lands on your head and you copied my diagrams, don't. Contact your installation specialist. But basically I'm just trying to get these on. Quite fiddly because they're like above, they're like above you. So it's quite hard to get them in. Basically, I'm just threading the nuts on. And you've got to get them super tight, otherwise, it messes with your tension. And you need your tension so when you go, it goes straight up, which is what you want. You don't want to be grafting, do it yourself. Do you now? There's no chain though, so I'm guessing you kind of pull it down and it locks in or something. I don't know what to expect. I don't know what to expect. Quite clean looking though, I will say that. Quite clean looking if it works. I'm using an impact driver. Obviously being careful not to. Being careful not to. I can see a bit of flex in the metal there, so that'll do. Okay, now, let's go back to the instructions. <laughs> <laughs> so we put tension in it, we've tightened the bolt. Oh my God, that was intense. Like so hard to hold it in a ball with the tension. But as soon as you rip it open. There we go. Okay, it's super dark right now in here because we're installing the roller shutter and we've got no power. So you probably can't see a thing that way. An absolute nightmare but basically I'm doing the runners right now here underneath you have to like curve this pretty weird I'm not sure whether my tracks too low I'll find out in a minute but it said cut the top of the track but the top of the track was there all the way up I'm sure it'll be all right it's looking good it's looking promising basically I've used I think two screws too many in this so I'm switching to these for the runners here. So I've only got four of these left. So I've got one there, one at the bottom for stability. And then I'm gonna put two smaller screws with washers here. Should be all right, doesn't really matter, but I'd probably rather more screws in this than be runners to be fair. Like, I'm not worried. I'm gonna just come back in a minute when it's done though, because it's quite stressful in the dark. I'll show you when the runners are done and then we'll do an initial lift up. Stay tuned. Day two on the roller shutter build, basically, it is working and it is operating and it is in, but I had to get someone out to come and do the tension in it. Long story short, I'm gonna open it so you can see me while I'm talking about it. Is that a bit better? Long story short, basically, I had to pull this up. I had to put these runners on with a spirit level in the right place. I had to set the tension by winding it forward twice, but I messed up and I put this little bracket here on the top. So I put the U thing on the right way, we didn't grab properly and it lost its tension. So I had to get some guy to come out with some of these. These are actually my neighbors. And basically they have to wind the tension back into it using two of them, tighten it up and now it works. First thing I've got to do is on the back of it, you have a locking system here. And basically, 
I've got to drill the side of the rails in the right place so the locking system can come out. I'm going to show you it from the front, it's so sick. Getting smoother. Isn't it? So as you can see, fully done, looks sick. Coming in a grey colour which kind of matches the cladding and so on and the doors. Um, basically it was a bit of a headache. I reckon you could, if you knew just that little hack of having the thing the right way round, so the weight of the shutter digs into the little teeth on that circle thing, I reckon it would be pretty easy to follow the instructions and fit it, but obviously I didn't know that, so that's where I went wrong with it. Pretty happy with the building now. It's kind of at a point where it's got a full outside, it's watertight, everything's sorted on it, and now we are about to move on to the inside, which is exciting. Um, one thing I will say is actually pretty happy when the whole thing's open at the front. Kind of doesn't feel so closed, which is nice. Nice and airy. Starting to dry out nice as well after the rain and so on. And yeah, it's good. I'm really, really happy with it. I'm going to use strip lights. I'll probably do three, 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 so it's super bright. So nine strip lights maybe uh, to start with. I'm going to run the cables underneath the roof board, so that's why we're going for a first fix. Then I'm going to board the roof, then put the light fixings on. I'm going to run the electricity board on this side, just so it's easy access to get to. I can kind of just have it on that wall where there's never going to be a lot there. This wall is always going to be pretty empty because the car is going to always be here. Um, I'm going to run my power board, first fix the light cables. We're then going to first fix all the socket cables. I'm going to pretty much just go two sockets on every wall, so six sockets. Um, I may even put an outside socket on as well with some flaps. Um, you can always add little lights to that. You can always add the pressure washer. There's always loads of things you can put on, so it's a necessity. I'm definitely going to do a double outside socket. In fact, I think I've actually got one lying around. Anyway, then I'm going to first fix as well um, an outside light on the hot tub side there, an outside light on the hot tub side there, and an outside light on the hot tub side there. And then I'm going to do an outside light on all three of the posts all the way along. So there's quite a lot of first fixing to do, a lot of cables to go in. That's what we're going to do on like Tuesday. And then after that, I'm going to insulate it. I've decided to do rock wool as my insulation. And the reason why is because it's fire retardant, water repellent, and it's substantially cheaper than Kingspan. And basically all my sections here are different sizes a little bit. I kind of just roughly went gap, 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 and so on. Basically, I think rock wool's just a bit easier to work with. I think it'll be easier to put up into the bits. If something's a tiny bit wider, you can shove it in. To be honest, I don't think I'll ever feel the difference in rock wool and king spam. I looked online and I couldn't really find a reason to sway towards the king spam. In my head, I kind of thought king spam is a better insulation. When I looked at like literally so many blogs and videos about insulation in buildings, sheds, houses, garages. A lot of people recommended using Kings, but um, a lot of people recommended using the Rockwell. So that was kind of why I've decided to just go for the Rockwell in the end. So I'm going to be Rockwell insulating it all. I may do the roof first, then do the roof boards, put the lights on, then do the wall by wall by wall. I don't know, or I'll just insulate the whole thing in one day and get it out the way. I'm not 100% sure. Obviously, then I've got me cladding for the walls, floorboards for the walls, and something else. I'm going to be using. Garage style flooring, which is like a click-in plastic type flooring. I don't even know where it's plastic, it might be rubber. Basically, it's like click-in tiles, but heavy duty. Um, you can drive cars on them and everything. I'm going to go for a dark, checkered look. So any colour ideas, drop a comment below this video. That'll be happening really soon. Um, I think that's pretty much it for now. I think that's going to be the end of today's video. It's been quite an eventful video. Getting me shut the door done. It was £80 to get it sorted out, and I nearly bought two Stiltons, which is the big pipe wrenches. They were £30 each in like 24 inch. I was going to buy two of them this morning, but instead I got someone out to do it for £80. And if I'd have bought the two wrenches, I would have still done it wrong because I had the clamp the wrong way around. So I'm actually up right now than I would have been. 
Last night it felt nice to leave tools in here rather than having to put them in the house. My kitchen's absolutely rammed with tools as well. Bikes, kitchen worktops, it's just a mess. It all needs bringing in here and putting in the centre of the room and we can work around it. Put it out, but it needs to come out the house. So it's probably going to get a little bit messy in here for a couple of months. I'm hoping in two weeks from now I might have power. But before we get into the inside, I'm going to do the first fix on Tuesday. And... I'm hoping maybe for this weekend's video, I'm going to sort all the stones down the side, all the flags out the front are going to get ripped up, we're going to put some stone in, but then we're going to leave the driveway flagged down the side and over a bit to the garage door width. After the garage door width, we're going to go stones for the dogs and stuff. Let me know if you want to see um, some of the garden and stuff in the next couple of days. That's something I do want to sort out because at the moment the dogs have got like a little dog garden out there and it's chaos. Four dogs, small garden. It's mental. So, I think that's going to be the end of today's video. Let me know in the comments below if you've got any ideas, suggestions, garage build ideas, garage wall ideas, garage roof ideas, garage lighting ideas, garage power ideas, car mod ideas, car content ideas, bike content ideas, bike build ideas. Any of them ideas, drop me a comment below this video and I'll see you in the next video. Make sure you go and check out Owner. Link is in the description. You get a free snapback cap with every single owner order. Go and check it out. Thanks for the support. See you in the next video.